This video is brought to you by our very good friends, Dave, Ian, and Julian from the On The Bench podcast. This week, they talk about Julian's recent trip to South Korea, and with the next episode being their 200th, celebrations are definitely afoot. Catch them wherever you access great podcasts. So this video will be the construction of a 135 scale Tamiya Kubelwagen Type 82. Now, I'll be doing this as a Deutsche Afrika Corps vehicle in the early part of the North Africa campaign. As you can see, not a lot of parts in the box. No PE, nothing special in this kit. This is going to be a low part count, real blitz build. So let's get this underway. So we start with the chassis of the vehicle. And if you're unfamiliar with the Kubelwagen and its heritage, the chassis is taken directly from the Volkswagen and really stayed, for the most part, unchanged all the way up into the late 1990s. So it has a rear transmission and four cylinder engine, which hangs out over the rear axle. Um, much like a Porsche 911, but it hasn't got the same performance, obviously. So the interesting thing here is that we can give this a quick clean up. There's a quite a bit of detail on the engine and transmission section here. And if you want to super detail that, probably well worth it. But bear in mind, the Kubelwagen also has uniquely a large bash plate that runs from the nose of the vehicle underneath the chassis, all the way covering the front axle, the tail shaft from the transmission, the transmission and engine itself. So be careful how much detail you want to put into this. Some of it may not be seen again. One thing that will be seen will be the muffler on either side of the engine. So what I'm doing is stippling to me an extra thin cement over the muffler and some of the exhaust there. That adds a little bit of texture, which will improve some of the rust effects I'm going to paint later on. And with the front axle, straight out of the kit, it will lock the wheels facing forward. But I'm going to pose them slightly turned to the side, so I use a little, to me, extra thin cement, soften the section of the arm there where the wheels join, just pinch the plastic with my cutters, don't cut through, and then just align that so that I can have the appropriate amount of turn to the wheel that I want to, and it'll be set at that position. So we can do both sides, of course. Again, just pinching that, not cutting it. And then when the glue sets, that will all harden in place and be really stable. There's no need to cut it all the way through. With the body of the Kubelwagen, I'll do it in two sections. So one will be the lower chassis and this the upper body. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my awesome patrons who without their support I just couldn't produce these videos. A big thank you to patrons like Robert Hallett. Thank you Robert. You can join them by clicking in the link in the description for this video and for less than the cost of a coffee each month you can access all the benefits that my patrons can including early release videos and one-on-one -on -one modeling tuition. So as you can see there's not a lot of parts here to building up the upper body. And the benefit in leaving this separate to the chassis and not joining them together at this stage means that when it comes time to painting the details inside the cabin, we've got a lot of room to work around. Certainly don't want to have brushes and fingers and stuff getting in the way of the uh, gear shift lever and the steering wheel, the tunnel, etc. Now this Kubelwagen will be part of a larger diorama and it's not going to be the hero project or hero vehicle in that. So I will do a fairly basic build, put a bit more energy into the weathering. But one thing which I will be doing is I'm going to pose the driver's door open. So in here, I'm just gonna set the two rear doors. Now they don't, surprisingly for a Tamiya kit, actually touch all the way along, which makes it uh, really imperative that you get the glue in here right. Then we'll set the cross member in place. So like the real vehicle with the kit as well, that cross member strengthens that upper body, makes it a little stiffer by joining two door pillars. 
and it's also a weapons rest. So you can see at the back of it, the little square nubs there. I'll replace those with some PE soon, but that's where you'll uh, lock in some rifles, which are the personal weapons for the crew. One of the upgrades I did was the photo etch dash, which comes as four sections. And there's a sandwiched vinyl dial section that goes into the middle of that. Actually looks quite good. And I'll use a liquid mask just to hide that dial section when I go to do the painting. On the driver's door, a photo etch map pocket. Some really nice detail there. Now this PE kit came from Edward. And surprisingly for them, really nice detail. And there we are. Not a lot of parts of this kit, so the construction video is only around five minutes. And the bulk of this video is now going to be over to painting and weathering. So after spraying the primer coat, which was Mission Model Paints Red Oxide Primer, I then did a coat of Mission Model Paints Panzer Grey. Now what I'm doing with this model is mimicking a vehicle that was issued and in service prior to the North African campaign beginning. A lot of vehicles for the initial deployment were taken from units that were already uh, in deployment or refit to go to North Africa. So those vehicles are already painted in uh, grey or camouflage colours suitable for the areas that they were operating in. So this vehicle, like a lot, in Panzer Grey. And then once they get to North Africa and into theatre, we're then field modified. The limited paint supplies that were available when troops got to Africa meant that there were some interesting combinations that were being used. As this vehicle had seen service prior to going to North Africa, I'm putting some worn effects into the paint itself. So chipping this back so the, the underlying primer coat's visible in certain areas of high wear just enhances the overall look of the vehicle. Over the top of this, I'll spray a coat of RAL 8000, which was one of the two colours available for troops to field apply paint once they arrived in North Africa. Now, paint supplies initially were quite sparse, so some vehicles, instead of getting a two-toned camouflage effect, uh, sometimes were painted in just one of the two single colours. So I'm going to do this vehicle in RAL 8000. Now, that's a choice that really it's not for an artistic purpose, but it's mostly because, uh, well, it's certainly happened and I'd like something to be a bit different about this one. So moving on to the underneath of the Kugelwagen now, I'm painting the transmission and engine in aluminium. I'm only going to do a little bit of detail here and then back over to the top side. There are timber slats that run the length of the crew compartment. So here what I'm going to do is, because I know I'm going to put dust effects down over the top of all of this, is I'm going to pump up the colour and the contrast. I'll paint the timber slats initially in quite a light colour. And then when it comes time to doing the wood grain effects, I'll be using oil paints. And I'll showcase a technique there where we can bump up the contrast so that it will punch through the dust effects once they go down a little later. Applying the oil paints here using a Thailand dark mud, I'll drag some of the oil across the timber slats, which is quite commonly used to do this technique. But rather than come bracket, can use a stiff bristled brush to make the wood grain effects. Because the timber slats here are so fine, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to dab extra amounts of oil paint along the top surface, which gives the effect of worn parts or knots in the timber or a, a heavy grain effect through there. And once the dust effect goes down over top of that, that'll still be visible. Mild steel in the desert, strangely enough, rust very quickly. 
So dew falls at night in most of the areas of North Africa and you find that components like exhaust, which are made from mild steel, rust very quickly once any of the paint gets chipped off them. So commonly you'll see exhausts and mufflers get a coverage of light to medium rust over them in quick time. So here I'm just using a couple of paint tones to replicate a very light older dark rust in there and a slightly brighter colour for some of the new rust. I don't want to go overboard here, we're not going to see a lot of the details that's underneath the vehicle, but we want the hint of it so that we're aware that it's there. And then onto the underbody weathering. So the weathering that I'm going to do here is primarily going to be around dry pigments. Again, it's under the vehicle, so it's not a primary area to be seen by the people who look at this model. But again, focusing on the fact that in theatre, these are generally dry areas, low rainfall, there's not a lot of waterways, certainly not a lot of mud, depending on where you are in North Africa. But here I want to simulate a vehicle that's been in a, definitely a dry climate. So to fix those pigments in place, I'm using a thinner, the same thinner that I've used for the paint, so in this case, Mission Models. And it doesn't have a heavy fixing property. It'll certainly bind them on here well enough. But what I don't want to use is a commercial fixer because most commercial fixers include a clear varnish and the clear varnishes often dry with a slight gloss to them. So I'll apply these in a couple of layers. I have two sets of pre-mixed colours and as you can see that really punches up the effect by having those multiple colours in multiple layers. And then moving over the top of the vehicle, I've now put down the two halves of the body of the vehicle and I've started to fit out on the internal crew area. So the seats are going in. I've already got the dash in here at this stage. And then it's just a matter of adding all the small little bits and pieces to the vehicle that hadn't been put down before. And here is the completed vehicle. The dust and weathering effects on the outside of the vehicle have been completed using primarily oils and dry pigments. And in fact, the vehicle's not really done because once I integrate it into the diorama at a later date, I'll add additional dust effects here so that there is a consistency in all of the elements that'll be used inside that diorama. But the core pieces are here. External storage of jerry cans, crew weapons, a tow rope found from another vehicle that's been attached to the front of the cover wagon, the spare wheel, the windscreen folded forward, which is typical in theatre. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you again in the next one. Thank you for watching.